For the past few weeks, I've been using my iPad Pro as my main computer. To genuinely test whether iPadOS 26 finally closes the gap between the iPad and the Mac. With my workflow focused on video and photo editing, scripting, emailing and casual gaming, my main objectives were to find out whether it actually is as big of an update as everybody claims it is, whether it actually brings the iPad closer to a Mac, how well it runs on a 5-year-old iPad Pro, and whether these changes are meaningful enough to use it as a daily computer, without frustration. So we'll start with a new liquid design, and straight up, I think it's gorgeous. It definitely brings a fresh feeling with all the glass effects and new animations. It creates a sense of something new, while mostly having stayed the same. Though there are some big changes, like the new customization options, or the clear icons, which is definitely my favorite. It finally gives you something that unifies the home screen, unlike the visual soup that are the default icons. Though I'd love a version that keeps the glassy background, but lets up logos show a hint of color for quicker recognition. This would have added clarity without losing the visual appeal, and it would have been a lot better in my opinion. I even submitted this to the beta feedback, so fingers crossed someone at Apple is gonna see this before September. Beyond visuals though, the design also improves functionality by making better use of a display's real estate, which gives you the impression that the display is bigger than it actually is. Can't wait for all the apps to be updated to this design language. It's gonna be a big improvement, especially for smaller iPads. We've also got some UI changes, like the drop-down menu from the Mac. But I'll be honest, since 90% of apps are basically scaled up iOS apps, the functions it offers most of the time are genuinely useless, except for closing the app or opening the multitasking menu. I've literally not once had the need to use it, even when I forced myself to, at least to see what new it brings to the iPad, and it still got me nowhere. Thankfully, though, we have real window management this time. Ever since iPadOS was a thing, I've wanted true window resizing, which Stage Manager never delivered. It simply wouldn't let you resize the apps the way you actually wanted to. But now you finally can. Just by dragging the app from the corner, it will resize just like on a Mac, finally giving you proper control. But it doesn't work with every app. CapCut, for example, is still stubborn and just won't let you do anything with it. And I'm sure there's many others. So I really hope that Apple can force apps like these to behave at the system core level by the end of a beta cycle. Otherwise, there's no point in having a new window management if it doesn't function properly with every single app. Also, while the new window management definitely adds to the feel that it's now a computer, in a real-world case, I found that I rarely used more than one app at a time. Because the iPad is the type of device that you usually pick up for a specific task, which for me was editing, and while doing that, I don't really need other apps open. Maybe except playing music or watching a video in the background. But the iPad still won't play music or a video along the task you're doing. It straight up just pauses the background task. So the fundamental issue as an iOS still persists. Also, your video or music will get paused if you stumble across an ad while scrolling in a second window. So in this case, the new windowing system adds little to no value. Let alone the fact that these apps are not designed to look good on the iPad small screen unless you use them full screen. I genuinely don't understand Apple's obsession with limiting the iPad's ability to play two videos at once, especially since it was able to do so in iPadOS 15 or 16, I think. But it's not all that bad. If you're doing a lot of emailing, accounting, or any other type of work that requires you to switch between apps, it's definitely got easier, especially if you're using a specific predetermined layout. I just find that the iPad doesn't offer a lot of these apps, at least right now. But speaking of apps, one update that is actually useful is live activity for background apps. Finally, you can leave an app that's uploading something or rendering a video, for example, and it will continue to do so in the background, while also notifying you that it's still running through live activities. So you can check your emails while rendering a video or go about your day without having to wait for a file to upload anymore. That's actually the biggest improvement in my opinion. It definitely brings the iPad closer to a Mac. Though again, there are some apps that just won't follow the rules, so hopefully Apple can force them to. Otherwise, it's just gonna be another feature added for the sake of being there instead of proper functionality. 
like in my use case, for example, where I haven't seen much of a productivity improvement with iPadOS 26. To me, it just feels like a visually fancier iPadOS 18. Though, if your main use case consists of, let's say, working with files, the update might be actually pretty useful. As the Files app has got a lot better, it actually displays useful information and even lets you set default apps for certain file types. Wow. <laughs> So, for example, you can set your PDFs to open in your editing app of choice, or photos from your external drive to open in Lightroom, and so on. You can also pin the files app on your dock, just like on Mac, which I imagine would save you a lot of time if you're primarily working with files or, let's say, writing a lot of emails with attachments. So, overall, it has become more useful, but only in certain scenarios. Unlike a Mac, that's gonna be useful across the board, no matter what you do. What it really needs to is run macOS apps natively, because frankly, there's no technical reason it can't. That alone would have been a much better improvement than all of the new features combined. It's literally running the same hardware as a Mac, yet I still can't add it directly off an external drive in Lightroom. Just because it's a scaled up iPhone app. I guess Apple thinks people are probably gonna stop buying Macs then, which I don't think is even true, since they offer a lot more versatility and raw power anyway, but at least it seems that Apple started to realize that too, and that's why they brought all of these features from the Mac to test the waters and see how people react. So while in my opinion the update is not that big of a deal when it comes to real-world use, it hints that Apple might be ready to let the iPad free. But of course, none of these features matter if the iPad can't keep up. So how's the performance and battery life been? With Beta 1, the performance was really bad and the battery life was straight up awful. The M1 iPad Pro suddenly felt outdated from just one update. And for a second, I thought Apple straight up killed the older iPads because they were too good and they couldn't sell new ones. But thankfully, Beta 2 fixed a lot of performance and stability issues. The battery life is still not stellar and there are still occasional bugs, but the update is stable enough that you can use it on your daily driver if you're really curious. Though I'd still recommend you wait because Beta 3 is gonna be out next week and the public beta is gonna be out the week after that. Major beta software updates always imply significant risks, including potential total device failure. So you may end up with a brick that even Apple Care won't replace, as running beta software voids it. So waiting for a public release is simply much safer. So is it finally a MacBook replacement? It seems like in certain areas it's pretty much on par with a Mac. Which is impressive, features like the improved files app, real background tasking and a better window management genuinely make the workflow smoother. But there's still way too many rough edges and uncertainties, so if you rely on a Mac for versatile work, I don't think the time has come yet to switch completely. However, if you're mainly handling specific tasks like video editing or casual productivity and the iPad meets those needs, this update makes it more viable as a laptop replacement than ever before. The bottom line is, if you hoped an iPad Pro with iPadOS 26 would replace your Mac, it's not there yet. But for the first time, it feels like the day might actually be close.